Should you take each set to muscle failure or keep one to three repetitions in reserve at the end of each set? Well, if I told you there is new research showing that going to failure is better for muscle growth. So Mike Menzer, Arnold Schwarzenegger and our very own Sam Sulek were right. Or is there more to it? A 2023 meta-analysis led by researcher Zach Robinson reviewed 55 studies about training intensity and muscle development. This meta-analysis found that the closer you train to failure, the more muscle growth progress you make. As you can see in this figure, muscle growth even peaks between 0 to 2 reps in reserve. Meaning that, based on this analysis, keeping just 3 repetitions in reserve drastically reduces your muscle gains. Most of the progress is made when you train to failure or keep 1 to 2 repetitions in reserve. And the biggest bonus in muscle gains even seems to occur when you train to failure. Now, before going all out in your workouts and actually failing in each of your sets, it's important to define muscle failure. Because in most studies, failure is described as politicianal failure. Faultitional failure means that you perform an exercise with as many repetitions as you can possibly do. So with faultitional failure, you keep zero repetitions in reserve at the end of a set, but you do not actually fail or drop the weight in the exercise. As you can imagine, reaching zero repetitions in reserve is an estimation. You do not know whether you have actually achieved muscle failure unless you physically cannot move the weight in an exercise which I do not recommend you do, especially not on compound movements, because the injury risk is simply higher. The way I would interpret the results of this meta-analysis showing that training to failure increases your gains, it's not that you should fail on all of your exercises, but that we want to train as close as possible to muscle failure for muscle growth. The study clearly shows we get bonus gains from the last hard repetitions of a challenging set. And this is an important point for the average individual looking to build muscle. We have been told a lot in the past years that you need to keep some repetitions in reserve with each working set. And there is truth to this message. In a minute, I will show you why we should not train to failure in every single set. But based on my training experience and even the research, most people tend to train too far away from failure. A 2021 study gathered a group of 160 healthy trained men and asked them to perform the bench press with their typical set of 10 repetitions. But instead of stopping at 10 reps, the researchers asked the volunteers to continue the set if they could and perform as many repetitions as possible. Most of the volunteers were able to perform 5 or more repetitions on top of their usual 10 reps. So the volunteers were actually training very far away from failure without realizing it. And this study is not on complete beginner trainees. All of the participants had been practicing the bench press for at least 6 months before the study. In at least those 6 months before the experiment, a lot of gains were left on the table. Having 5 or more repetitions in reserve at the end of a set is too far away from failure to produce great results. By definition, your training should be challenging. The goal of lifting weights is to disrupt homeostasis, give your muscles a reason to adapt and grow. Other research also confirms that the closer a repetition is to muscle failure, the more effective that repetition is for stimulating muscle growth. This is why training as close as possible to failure is a part of my program as well. It can be difficult to know whether you are actually pushing yourself enough, unless you train to the point that your repetition tempo slows down and it means sometimes reaching zero repetitions in reserve. Especially on the last set of a compound exercise and on low stress isolation movements, I like to train as close as possible to failure, without actually failing in the set. Now notice how I mentioned that I only like to maintain zero repetitions in reserve on the last set or on isolation exercises. I do not recommend training to complete failure on every set. We need fatigue management in the workout. If you train to complete failure on your first set of the bench press, your second and third set will suffer. Also, if you have a long leg day coming up and you do all four sets of back squats to muscle failure, good luck actually performing well on the Bulgarian split squats that come after that. We need to be strategic with our failure training. A typical work-in set on a compound movement needs to be close to failure, let's say around one to two repetitions in reserve. And then only on the last set of a compound exercise and on our isolation movements, that's when we can push to zero repetitions in reserve. Let's take my upper body day as an example. My first two exercises are the barbell bench press and weighted pull-ups, both for three sets. The first two sets of these exercises, I purposely keep around one to two repetitions in the tank. Not muscle failure, but definitely hard sets. On my last third set, I can give it my all and train to zero repetitions in reserve with the same weights I used in set one and two. This approach allows you to have high quality volume on all three sets, and we also capitalize on the bonus gains we saw in the previous study that you get from training to muscle failure. The next two exercises in the workout are cable rows and incline bench press. I maintain the same structure here. 
Set one and two are kept between one to two repetitions in reserve. But on the third set, I push myself to zero repetitions in reserve, or in other words, volatitional failure. Now for the last two exercises of the workout, I have bicep curls and skull crushers. Because these are isolation movements that do not stress your overall nervous system much, I take these movements to zero repetitions in reserve on each set. Even if you take something like a bicep curl to zero repetitions in reserve, because it's a single joint movement, after a minute and a half or two minute rest interval, you will generally be able to get back to the same weight without much of a performance drop. When your goal is to build more muscle, maintaining the training intensity I described just now is your safest bet based on the current research. On our first sets of our compound exercises, we purposely keep one to two repetitions in reserve to manage fatigue. On the last set and isolation exercises, we push to zero repetitions in reserve. And zero repetitions in reserve, I would like to describe as doing as many repetitions you can possibly do with good form. I am not talking about dropping the bar on your chest while you bench press. During your last set of a compound exercise and an isolation movement, give it your all while keeping good form. That is how I apply the exercise science research about training intensity to my workouts and those of my clients. You can certainly still build muscle while keeping two or even three repetitions in reserve on all of your sets, as shown in this meta-analysis by Rafalo and colleagues. Actually failing on every single set did not result in more muscle growth in this study. But from my experience, the main benefit of still having some sets with zero repetitions in reserve is that it keeps you in check. We want to avoid accidentally training far away from failure, thinking you're only keeping two repetitions in reserve, but you actually could have done six more. I want to see you making great gains, so let's make sure each working set is productive. Again, in broad terms, that would mean keeping one to two repetitions in reserve on the first sets of your compound lifts, with only the last set being actually taken to muscle failure and also taking your isolation movements to zero repetitions in reserve. Based on someone's individual training needs, we can always deviate from this recommendation. If someone is practicing a new exercise for the first time or is recovering from an injury, a different set of training intensity guidelines apply. Overall, it's fair to say that the old school bodybuilders had a point when they said we need to train to muscle failure, but there is nuance, of course. The middle ground is to combine having reps in reserve and failure training both in your program. As a final note, before going into intense exercise in which you train close to failure, make sure you have a good warm-up. Dynamic stretches in combination with warm-up sets will make sure that you are well prepared to handle the heavy working sets. Let's say a bench press is your first exercise of the day. Perform two sets of vertical and lateral arm swings, with also two warm-up sets in which you build up to your working weight. After the dynamic stretches and warm-up sets, you are ready to crush set one. When training with a high intensity like I advise in this video, a warm-up is more important than usual. If you want to learn more about science-based training, I have a fantastic video lined up here for you above, so make sure to click that. For now, I'm signing off, and I will see you in the next video.